in our continuing coverage of Z690, we have the Aura Z690 Master. This is the Master Edition, so this is DDR5. Now, I actually reviewed the Gigabyte Gaming X DDR4. It should look familiar. It's almost an identical board layout, except, well, this is the Master. There's a lot more stuff here than the DDR4 version. You know, spend more, get more. In this case, get a lot more. Let's take a look. This board, oh, it's all heatsink. Look at this. Look at this heat, this M.2 heatsink, I think takes the record for most metal in a single M.2 heatsink. It's sort of weird. It seems like it's a little more aesthetic than an actual fin stack, but having this much thermal mass, it's gotta be good, right? We also have the second largest M.2 heatsink I've ever seen. This whole thing, which is for up to four M.2s. This board will fit three 110 millimeter M.2s and two 80 millimeter M.2s, five M.2. Goodness gracious. Of course, it only has three PCIe slots in order to be able to do that. The primary PCIe slot is PCI Express 5.0 by 16 to the Alder Lake LGA 1700 socket. And then the other two are wired in through the chipset. Both of the slots wired in through the chipset are PCI Express by four, meaning four lanes wide. So if you're using a, you know, like a by eight, you know, Mellanox 100 gigabit card. Sorry, it's, it's only a by four connection. It'll probably still work. It'll probably just be bottlenecked a little bit. The other nice thing about this motherboard is it's a true VRM fin stack. Gigabyte did not skimp on the VRM cooling on this motherboard. It is serious. Serious thermal pads, a serious thermal interface, and double thermal interfaces between the protective back plate on the motherboard, which, yes, it does have a Nice attractive backplate on the back of the motherboard, but also the thermal interface for the areas that get hot. It's gonna help dissipate some heat. Four pin fan headers, nine. Nine four pin fan headers, ah, ah, ah. There's dual eight pin CPU power connectors. Two of the fan connectors are located there. Four along the top edge here, one at the front middle edge of the board, and three along the bottom edge of the motherboard. That is ample headers if you wanna get fancy. In terms of front panel USB connections, we've got two 30 pin fan headers and a type C header. Yes, the type C header is 20 gigabit, 20 gigabit. So that's, you know, sort of dual 10 gig, double sided 10 gig. At the rear of the motherboard, they basically used the entire IO shield for USB. This is just an absurd number of five and 10 gigabit USB ports, including two type C ports, both of which are 20 gig. You might be thinking, wait a minute, isn't that more USB connectivity than even the ridiculous Z690 chipset supports? You would be correct. Gigabyte actually employs two hub chips in order to make all of the USB ports on this motherboard available. They've also added an additional uh, two USB 2 headers. So that's four USB 2.0 ports that are available for other accessories or peripherals that you might run. Or you could break those out to you know a rear USB 2.0 IO shield if you want, because there are no USB 2.0 ports on the back of the motherboard. It's all five and 10 and 20 gigabit. The onboard NIC, hallelujah, is 10 gigabit Aquantia. Very nice. 10 gigabit, the Marvell AQC 1113C. That number sounds familiar. You'd be correct. You've seen it before. The audio solution on this motherboard, gold plated 7.1 analog out, also has optical SPDIF out. That is of course implemented using the Realtek 1220VB chipset, along with an ESS Sabre ES9118 DAC. So that's gonna support, you know, DTSX Ultra, high definition audio, and a lot of other really cool stuff on the audio side. Front panel audio, of course, you got the DAC for driving, you know, higher end headphones. You can sort of see them poking out the side of the heat sink there. So no complaints about the audio solution. The board does support BIOS flashback so that you can flash the BIOS from a USB stick because hey, there's more Alder Lake SKUs that are coming out that are probably not supported in the shipping BIOSes for these, which by the way, this one came from Micro Center. It shipped with the F4 BIOS. I did all of my testing on the F6A BIOS. The F6A BIOS was dramatically more bug free and a little bit faster. New micro code from Intel. Intel's tweaked some things, you know, done some stuff to the special sauce. Definitely has a, uh, a, a heavy sodium aftertaste now, whereas it didn't before, but hey, the performance is better. So I can't really argue with that. Oh, and before I forget, there is a Thunderbolt header. Thunderbolt works a little differently for Thunderbolt 4, more control wires and control plane stuff, but there is a header for that. I haven't got my hands on a controller yet. There's also six, six gigabit per second SATA ports. Check the block diagram for any shared resources. But yeah, if you're still rocking SATA devices, you've got the SATA option for this motherboard. 
It also, in the box, comes with two thermal sensors that you can work into your fan profile, which of course is handled directly by the motherboard, which is nice if you're on alternative operating systems like Linux, or you just don't want to load extra bloat onto your Windows installation. There's also an acoustic sensor. So you can actually install a microphone inside your computer to listen for noise that comes from the fans or other internal noise and use that to set up a profile and say, hey, try to keep the noise level below this and beyond that, I don't care in terms of cooling, which is sort of a nice touch. You'd be surprised how many people use that. And it's, it's not bad. Other nice features, it has a diagnostic code readout and a power button, physical power button in the uh, top left corner of the board. It's a nice touch. It's pretty easy to do a build around this system. It's pretty easy to do a build with the system, you know, just outside on the motherboard box because the IO shield will protect it from shorting out or anything like that. Overall, it's a pretty solid board. In my opinion, the VRM solution is a little overkill, even for Alder Lake, even the, the cooling and that sort of thing. If you're gonna be doing extreme overclocking, this is probably the board for you. Oh, and it does have the new Intel Wi-Fi 6E solution, which is 802.11ax, but it's Wi-Fi 6E, so it's got a little bit more extra special sauce. It comes with a nice antenna setup as well. Now, one of the things I love about Gigabyte is they publish a block diagram in the manual showing you exactly what connects where and what shares resources. So if you're planning a really monster system with dual PCI Express 4.0 cards, or you're gonna do something with Alder Lake RAID, definitely check out the motherboard manual for the block diagram to understand how everything connects. Now this is a Z690 chipset. Normally on Intel reviews, the chipset connection is one of the things that I complain about. I've been complaining about that since the Skylake days. Alder Lake, no more. This is PCI Express, this is eight PCI Express 4.0 lanes of bandwidth from the CPU to the chipset. Eight PCI Express 4 lanes just for the chipset. This is not something that's going to bottleneck because all of your secondary PCI Express lanes come off of the chipset. Most of the peripherals that connect to the, the chipset are not gonna be using that bandwidth all of the time anyway. I'm a little surprised that on something as high end as the Gigabyte Master motherboard that it doesn't split out the PCI Express 5 slots so that you could have a by eight by eight configuration. You can of course get that on higher end boards, but not on this board. So if you're running to run, you know, two graphics cards or two really high speed peripherals, um, it's not gonna do it. Uh, I'm also surprised that there's not a motherboard on the market I know of, that I know of yet, that would take the PCI Express 5 lanes with the PCI Express 5 bridge and take those 16 lanes and turn it into 32 PCI Express 4 lanes. That's an equivalent amount of bandwidth. And that would let you run two PCI Express 4.0 by 16 PCIe slots on a motherboard at full bandwidth, plus all of the other PCIe slots or other PCIe connectivity that you could have through the chipset. So yeah, that's not a thing really anywhere. So it's not really anything I can complain about. Just full disclosure, very happy with the way that Intel did the Z690 chipset, tons of bandwidth. Of course, the primary M.2 slot, that's also connected directly to the CPU. That's not going through the chipset. Same as 11th gen, that was a, that was a good improvement on the 11th gen. Well, yeah, 11th gen. So uh, nice job, good job Intel. Very nicely done. If you wanted to run RAID M.2, where you have one connected to the CPU and one connected through the chipset, you totally can do it. It's really easy to do. We did a video on that with this board's uh, younger sibling that uh, was DDR4. Uh, so be sure to check that out. This board says that it's rated for DDR5 4800, and I can confirm DDR5 4800 worked just fine on this motherboard. I managed to get my hands on some DDR5 5200 also working on this motherboard, at least for me. So your mileage may vary. <laughs> DDR5 has been weird. Have you noticed? I've noticed that the QVL list for DDR5 memory, they published some and then they took it down and then they put it back and then they took a lot of stuff off of it and they took it down again and they put it back and now there's only like two or three kits on the qualified vendor list. DDR5 I think has some teething issues. So just get the DDR4 board. So we did a lot of benchmarks and testing between DDR4 and DDR5. This board with DDR5, it's a good board, don't get me wrong. Personally, I don't think that it's worth it going through a lot of headache and misery to get DDR5 when you could get the Gigabyte Gaming X version of this motherboard with DDR4 and basically be at feature parity. I mean, everything on this board is nicer. The VRM's nicer, the cooling's nicer. There's more fan connectors. Heck of a lot more fan connectors. The fan layout on the, ga the Gaming X is really a little bit dumb, but this is much better cooling backplate, higher end board all around, more USB ports, just 10 gigabit on board. There's a lot of things to love about it, but the price of admission for DDR5 is too high 
right now for what it gives you. This is the i9 in here that I've been testing. But I've also tested the i9 in the DDR4 board. With G-Skill Trident Z CL16 memory, it's plenty fast enough. You can get, you know, at 1080p, we're talking 220, 225 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you know, 1080p high. And uh, the memory makes more of a difference there than most other things. And that's assuming that you were able to procure the highest end GPUs, you know, a 6800 XT or a 3080 or a 3090. And if you're talking about a lesser GPU, uh, the differences basically aren't relevant but in most scenarios between DDR4 and DDR5. So, end soapbox. If you're curious about Linux support, well, the audio codec and the NIC, those are both well supported on Linux. This is nothing new to Linux. There's nothing crazy going on here. The extra USB ports are implemented with hubs as opposed to extra you know, PCIe controllers, even though Z690 has the, the, the lanes for that. So it's a little less overall aggregate USB bandwidth, but I don't really see that as a bad thing because, oh, oh boy, there's so much USB bandwidth here anyway. It's just insane. And that means that you're also not gonna have any problems on Linux with uh, secondary or tertiary USB controllers because those drivers can get a little sketchy. In terms of overall Alder Lake Linux support, it can be a little hit and miss. This is one of the few boards that actually correctly, at least as the BIOS F6A with XMP on, correctly reports the uh, hints in the proc folder that let the Linux scheduler properly schedule things on the P cores first, and then the E cores, and then the hyper-threaded cores. Uh, sometimes when you turn on XMP, those all go to 255. That was true with the i7 and the i9, but not the i5. I'm not sure why that's not working with the i5. Works fine with XMP off, really squarely behavior. Not, we're sh not, not sure what's up with that. I noticed on the other board that it worked fine at first, but when I started playing musical chairs with CPUs and clearing the BIOS, it seemed like it didn't really 100% clear the BIOS. I don't know what that's about, but you can hardcore clear the BIOS, pop the battery, hold the button down, you know, really clear it. Go in there and do your settings. Try it with XMP off first if you're gonna run Linux. Check those folders in proc, make sure that's working correctly. Then you're good to go. That's really the only usage notes that you need on Linux. If you're more interested in Linux content, we have a Linux channel you can get subscribed to. That's all really good. But it's been a relatively quick look at the Z690 Aorus Master. It's a really high-end board. I'm a little surprised that there's not more accessories in the box, but all the accessories are actually mounted to the board. No complaints. DDR5 right now is not a good value in my opinion, but this is a solid board. If you're gonna build it completely nuts, you know, DDR5 solution and you're gonna go with DDR5 memory and you don't care. Or you might be watching this in the future when DDR5 is generally available. But right now when 32 gigs of DDR4 is like a couple of hundred bucks, it's hard for me to recommend DDR5. Especially if you can get really fast DDR4 for maybe another 50 or hundred dollars. I mean, that's gonna give DDR5 a run for its money if you've got good fast DDR4. I don't know. I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you want to argue with me about all this, you can find me in the level one forums or just hang out. You can hang out, chat, take pictures of your build. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm signing out. You can, you can find me there. Oh.